In the wilderness, people are faced with two options, facing death or surviving to tell the tale. These are their stories. <laughs> I love it. I, I do want to... Shout out if you... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Shout out if you can get the reference that was from. Uh, should be pretty obvious. <laughs> I got it. Say. It's glorious, too. Yeah. Walker, you are you've you've really blown that like the podcast up as far as like quality of like the random intros and like oh dude know, this I think I it adds a little flavor to it. Off. And man, you guys are it adds a little surprise. flavor. Yeah, I like it. I would like to do more of it. I think we could definitely up the production value, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Hey. We're taking baby steps. I will say, Actually, getting a consistent hey, like, schedule down surprise. has been a huge piece. Same yeah, this is an interesting way to interesting way to start the wilderness tales segment, but I don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually oh, fuck. What was I about to say? Totally lost it. Anyways, uh, I'll get into my production quality. Here. Good production quality. Wilderness tales. Yeah. You either survive. I, I don't know. I can't remember. I lost it. But anyways, okay. wilderness tales. As you as said from the intro, these are their stories. So today we're going to be sharing. Uh, Lost in Yellowstone, The Misadventures of Truman Everts. Have you guys ever heard of this guy? Uh, I think so, actually. Yeah? What do you What do you think you know about him? Don't look anything up. He, if you know anything. Did he, like, wander around writing a bunch in a bunch of different wilderness places and at one point just went missing in, like, Utah or in the desert somewhere? Well, this is, he went missing in Yellowstone. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm thinking yeah, yeah, of the yeah. guy then. But uh, here we go. <clears throat> and I'll try to maybe include some pictures here. For Truman Everts, it was the chance of a lifetime. Join an expedition into the heart of Yellowstone Park, an expedition into unknown country where few people had gone before. Everts, a 54-year-old former assessor from the territory of Mon- assessor for the territory of Montana, decided to join a party of 19 men and 40 horses. The Washburn Langford Doan expedition of 1870 set out into the wilds of Yellowstone, chronicling the region's wonders as they went. For much of the trip, they circumnavigated the Yellowstone Lake, and in early September, on the south end of the lake, Everts nearly met his demise. While the party was whacking its way through thick timber between Heart Lake and Yellowstone Lake, Everts became separated from the main force. Apparently, this separation didn't cause too much alarm, for in the thick of going into a lodgepole forest, pine forest, the travel can be tough, especially for a party the size of this one. When Everts became separated with his horse, he didn't get alarmed, even when he had to spend the first night alone out. In an account of the harrowing adventure that he would survive, he wrote of that night, I rode in on the dire- I rode on in the direction I supposed had been taken until darkness overtook me in the dense forest. This was dis- disagreeable enough, but caused me no harm. I had no doubt of being with the party at breakfast the next morning. The next day, he rose early and set off in the direction he had been traveling, certain to meet his comrades. But somewhere in that thick timber, he lost his way again and made a serious mistake. He dismounted his horse and left it with the reins trailing while he walked ahead to scout a route over a particularly tough section. Something spooked his horse and it took off, quote, at full speed among the trees, and that was the last I ever saw of him, unquote. Yeah, (laughs) not good. On the horse were Everett's supplies, blankets, guns, everything. He Uh had only the clothes on his back. Yeah, he had only the clothes on his back and a couple of knives, and a small glass jar. Thus began the terrible odyssey in which Everts would be beset by a series of calamities guided by visions and hammered by autumn weather in the mountains. September in Yellowstone country can be a beautiful time of year, but for Everts it was nearly fatal. Snow, wind, and rain lashed him. Instead of going back toward Yellowstone Lake in a possible rendezvous with his party, he initially set off south and ended up on the shores of Heart Lake, where he lay down beside some thermal springs and thus kept from dying of hypothermia. He ate a few things, such as a small bird that made the mistake of seeking shelter from a mean storm under the same tree as Everts. 
Although probably not the best woodsman, he ingeniously started fires using his uh, glass jar and was able to fashion a knife from a buckle and a fish hook and a uh, from a buckle and a fish hook from a pin. He lost these in a forest fire that he that he apparently accidentally set, burning off a lot of his hair before he awoke. Oh my god! At least started a forest fire. Is there a book about this? I don't know. This is just a story about Yellowstone, like I found I like online. I would, I would read this. Sounds interesting. If he has like <laughs> just journal entries about it, let's see. Ironically, the party waited for some time for Everts and for Everts and set off in the direct in different directions searching for him. At one point, Langford and another man rode almost to the shore of Hart Lake, where Everts was lying on some warm ground next to a hot spring but they turned back and did not find Everts. Uh, and Langford's horse plunged through the crusted surface of a thermal area. They turned around. Damn. For 37... <laughs> Alright, we're almost done. For 37 days, Everts' main staple was the root of thistle, commonly known today as Everts' thickle or Everts', th Everts thistle or elk thistle. So he got a plant named after him in the park. This sustained him as he walked crawled and struggled his way around Yellowstone Lake and down the Yellowstone River. At last, he was found in mid-October by two men who were looking for him and who at first thought he was a wounded bear crawling along the rocks near Crescent Hill at the north end of what today is the park. Everts gained much publicity for his harrowing tale and was even honored by being offered a job first superintendent of the new park in 1872. <laughs> he turned the job down, noting that he wanted it very much, but could not take it because there was no salary. Everts later moved <laughs> away from Montana and fathered a child when he was in his 70s. Wow. Damn. He Oh, God. He'd married a girl of 14. It was 1870, people remember this. He had married a girl of 14 when he was in his mid-60s. What a creep. <laughs> oh, God. That's weird. Uh, he lived until 1901, dying in Maryland at the age of 85, apparently none the worse for wear from his ordeal in the first ever national park. So that was the story of uh, Truman Everett's.